All right. Uh, welcome once again. Uh, let's pray and we, Father, we thank you for uh, this new day. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. Uh, Lord, even as we uh, start studying about ministering and healing and deliverance, Holy Spirit, I pray that uh, you would help us understand, uh, pour out your wisdom over us, help us to grasp things of your kingdom. Holy Spirit, you are our best teacher. Um, so minister to us as we learn from your word. We surrender our mind uh, to you. You come and take complete control. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Great. Uh, so again, good to see you. I hope you all uh, got the book. Very good. Uh, I hope you were able to download the PDF uh, from the classroom section. Uh, we will be looking at uh, or using this uh, APC publication called Ministering, Healing and Deliverance. All right. Um, so we'll use this as a kind of a manual on how to how we can minister in healing and deliverance. All right. Um, so great. Um, is is ministering healing and deliverance important? Thora, thora. <laughs> is, is is it important for us to minister in healing and deliverance? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think um, you know when we go when we read through the gospels like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and when we see the life of uh, Jesus itself, um, we see he emphasized quite a lot on healing and deliverance. Okay, so we'll look at a few scriptures and what did it look, uh, you know, how was evangelism? I know there is a subject called lifestyle evangelism. Did you have it last year, last semester? Okay, uh, and I'm sure you would have touched, uh, learned about how Jesus did evangelism, you know. Um, so, once again, just to reiterate, um, to recap a little bit about how, how did Jesus do evangelism, right? Uh, and we'll just look at a few scriptures for us. So uh, if you look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, uh, it's in the notes. You just follow along with me. Uh, or, yeah, you can actually, it's good for you to turn in your Bibles. Or you can just make a note of it, and I'll read it for us, okay? So you can just make a note of it in your notebooks, and then you can read it. So Matthew 4, 23 uh, it says, he went about, who is the he? Jesus, right? Jesus went about teaching, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Okay, so there are three things there that's involved. So Jesus went about not only teaching, right? He taught, Jesus taught. It would have been amazing to sit in his classroom, isn't it? I mean, imagine getting a session from Jesus, uh, <laughs> right? So Jesus taught and Jesus preached. We know that thousands of people followed Jesus into the desert, right? Like if Jesus had to feed 5,000 and more, that means that many people followed him. So Jesus taught, Jesus preached. It doesn't stop there. And he was healing. He healed all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Okay, um, so it says all kinds of healing. So Jesus taught, preached, and healed. Um, and then once he was done, towards the end in Matthew chapter, um, in Matthew ten and Luke ten, just write it down. Okay, he also commissioned people. Now, what is the meaning of commission? It's not that extra money we get, you know, <laughs> oh, give me commission, no. <laughs> so commission, if you split it into two different words, is co-mission. Co, it's not C-O hyphen, right? Co-mission. That means you are co-partnering. Okay? Co-partners, we say that, right? Co-founders. Uh, so he, when Jesus said, I'm commissioning you, so you are on my mission. We are going to commission, we are going to be partners in this, in this ministry. So as you go out, this is what he says. Um, I'm just going to read from Matthew 10, 7, 8. It's, uh, it says, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So Jesus is saying, 
when you go out, when you do this ministry, preach, saying the kingdom is of God is at hand. It doesn't stop there. Then he says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. For freely you have received, freely give. Okay? Um, so this is not a suggestion. This is a command. Okay? Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Um, okay, so Jesus was very clear that he was not, again, I'm, I'm going to be repeating a lot of the things that I might say, so please forgive me in advance for sounding very redundant. Uh, okay, so Jesus preached, taught, and healed people. He, he just didn't do that. He also commissioned people, his disciples. He said, when you go out, preach. But don't just preach, heal the sick. Okay, so Jesus is giving a very clear emphasis on the importance of uh, the healing, uh, healing ministry and deliverance. Um, okay, and now remember, this is the first class, and we are just laying down the foundation of it. So we we just looked at Jesus's uh, importance of uh, his way of evangelism, and the importance that he gave for healing. But what we need to understand as the foundation of this whole ministry. And healing and deliverance is that it is the success is not in the methods okay success is not in the methods what is the meaning of method uh, okay only if I lay my hands on you you'll get healed that's a method isn't it yes or no okay um, there are so many methods like pouring oil on a person is a method right uh, keeping a cloth or uh, whatever it's a method so but what we have to remember and be very clear about is that the success or the result is not in the method it is in the person of Jesus Christ okay he is our healer and he is the source of our healing Okay, so we need to understand that and be very clear about it from the beginning. Are you are you all with me? Yes. Okay. So that's the number one foundation, is that uh, the result is in the person of Jesus, not in the methods. Okay. Write it down. Make a frame of it. And put it in your. Okay. Uh, and the other foundation that's very important is is seen in John chapter fourteen, verse twelve. John chapter 14, verse 12. I'll read it for us. You can just write it down. Uh, it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. So truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes. Okay, so how many believers do we have? Okay, how many of you all believe in Jesus Christ? Okay, only two people, one person from online. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, guys, we'll have an altar call at the end. Maybe you can, uh, you know. Great. Right, so we are all believers, right? We all... I uh, believe in, in the Lord Jesus Christ, that uh, he is a Lord and Savior. We believe that he died and he rose again from the dead. And now, right now, he's seated on the right hand side of the Father. Yeah? So whoever believes. The scripture is so beautiful. Whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. Ah. And it doesn't stop there. And greater works than these will he do. Okay. So the second foundation, so the first foundation is what? The result is dependent on the person of Jesus and not on the methods or the process. Okay. It, the process and the methods doesn't matter. At that moment, God will tell you to use a certain method. We just have to be obedient and just do that, right? 
but he is the source he is our healer and the second foundation is that all of us can do it everyone can do it whoever believes can do you believe in jesus you can lay your hands you can pray for the sick you can heal the sick right so jesus is moving in a place of anointing or in, a, in such place of power he's saying don't pray for the sick he said heal the sick are you with me right jesus is walking in such power and authority and intimacy with his father he's commanding us he's, he didn't say pray for the sick he said heal the sick but you know that's a place that we all you know want to uh, get at you know where we will come to a place and we would just you know in jesus name be healed right uh, but there's absolutely nothing wrong in praying okay uh, so don't get me wrong okay we pursue we pray for the sick we uh, and you know we heal the sick we all we do all of that in jesus name amen okay so are you all with me how's it going the first 10 minutes first 10 15 minutes <laughs> still alive okay they say the start to anything is very important no so the start isn't great and the whole semester is gone guys <laughs> I know there's a lot of responsibility on me, so. Okay. Uh, this is a very important subject, and I've learned to uh, really embrace it over the last four years of teaching this, because um, this is a topic that I did not focus on very naturally. Like, Although I, I grew up in a Christian family and whatnot, and I've seen people pray for the sick and heal the sick, I did not understand the importance uh, that Jesus gave to this. It's not just about feeling sorry for the person. Let me go pray for the person and get better. It's not that. It's uh, Jesus wants to see that person well. Are you with me? Right. And as we journey through this subject, we are going to learn a lot about, uh, you know, is, is, even uh, points like why is there sickness in this world? Right? It's very fundamental points like that, which to which we all, I'm sure, we all know the answer. Okay, so um, you all answered saying that, okay, ministry of healing and deliverance is important. Uh, although we have in this day and age, we have advanced medical uh, systems. Right? Uh, the medicine is very advanced. Like, you know, we have all these very advanced um, X-ray machines, you know, scanning machines, whatever. You know, I'm just saying it's so uh, advanced, but still, Science can't help everyone. He, it's still not able to help everyone and, and make everyone uh, better, right? Or completely heal and restore, isn't it? Right. And uh, so, even though we and we are so grateful for to all the doctors, uh, you know, uh, during the pandemic, we know, uh, and also even otherwise, but they were in the front line you know helping people all around the world so we are very grateful for them and while we are very grateful for all our doctors and nurses and whatnot we still have to remember um, that science cannot do everything right uh, and that's why it's very important for you and for me to minister in healing and deliverance it's very important it's a command it's not just uh, okay you think about it you know ponder over it do fast day, you know, forty day fasting. You see, you know, no. God has spoken. He's very clear, right? We all long for, you know, we somewhere in in life we say, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Speak to me. Speak to me. Speak to me. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Lord, should I get married or should I not get married? What do you want to do? I want to get married, Lord. Okay, so get married, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Okay. <laughs> Uh, do you want to, like, Lord, should I do engineering or architect? <laughs> well, I'll do engineering, and then halfway through, I'll decide to do architecture. Very good. So do that, and then heal the sick, cleanse the left, and raise the dead, you know. Uh, so he has spoken. Okay. Uh, he has. He is very clear. He has spoken. He said, heal the sick. This is my command. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. I want to emphasize one more time, is that it is not just a suggestion from Jesus. Do you want to do this? You know, he's not suggesting. You, I'm sure we all have friends who are like, hey, that car is nice. Do you want to think about this car? That guitar is nice, but this brand is amazing. It's 50% of, you know. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. 
we need to get you know that that's the core of this it needs to get very deep into our hearts understood okay good so why miracles healing and deliverance uh, let's look at eight biblical reasons as to why we have to minister in healing and deliverance are you all ready let's go a little deeper why do we minister in healing and deliverance so in your hard copy I am in page 16. In your PDFs, I don't know where I am. So, anyways, I'm. Okay, thank you. As long as we are all on the same page. Thanks, Shikhar. Okay, so uh, we are looking at a few biblical reasons as to why we must minister in supernatural healing and deliverance. Why? So the number one reason is miracles, healing, and deliverance reveal the reality and the nature of God. Miracles, okay, three things. There are miracles, healing, and deliverance. They all reveal. That, that small word there is very important. Okay, reveal. The re uh, reality and the nature of God. So it is from the word reveal we get revelation. Okay, so it also means you would have heard this word called unveiling. Veil, so veil, V E I, not veil, you know, sea veil, <laughs> uh, V E I L. Uh, if you, uh, so you've seen, my wife does this all the time when she's riding the bike, you know, some of the, uh, you know, when they take on dupatta or something and then cover their face fully. What they've done is they've put a veil over their face, right? Uh, and so when you're removing, it's an unveiling, right? So you so there's a, some kind of an unveiling happening here. So miracles, healing, and deliverance is unveiling, right? Unveiling the reality, right, and the nature of God. One of the questions that the atheists ask a lot is: If there is a God, why is there sickness? Why is there why are why are kids dying in cancer? Why are kid you know? Why is there sickness in this world? Why is why do we have to struggle? Why is there evil in this world? Isn't it? And so ministering in healing and deliverance uh, is us unveiling them to the reality of who God is, that he is our father, that he loves us, he wants us to be whole. Are you with me? Okay, so Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. <clears throat> Exodus 15, verse 26, it says, and... I'm just reading uh, from the notes. If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commands and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals. I am the Lord who heals. So that is his covenant name, which is Jehovah Rapha. Okay? I am the Lord. So it is not just uh, another, uh, again, like a title or something, but it's his covenant name. So uh, this is not the subject of the course to go through the covenants or what it means. Uh, but when God makes a covenant, uh, so okay, um, so you know when God makes a covenant with Abraham in those days, right? What they used to do is they would bring. Uh, if if I'm making a covenant with Joseph and we are living in the Middle East, some three thousand, four thousand years ago, right? Uh, we want to make a transaction, uh, and we've agreed on a deal. <clears throat> and so what we would do is we would bring an animal, right? They would bring an animal. They would cut it in three different halves or four, whatever, how many ever, depending on the size of the animal. Okay, they would cut it and the blood everywhere. And both the parties will walk 
between the pieces. Okay? Um, it sounds too gory, but this is reality. This is what used to happen. Okay? Vegans, I'm sorry. Don't mean to offend you. but right? So me and Joseph would walk between the cut pieces of the animal. So what is that saying is, if I don't keep my word, what happened to this animal? Let it happen to me. And you know when God makes a covenant with Abraham, only it, you read it from Genesis 12 onwards, it's, it's, it says only God went through that. Abraham didn't have to go through that. Because what God is saying is, my covenant with you is not based on your end of faithfulness. <laughs> are you with me? My covenant with you is not based on how good you are. Or how, you know, so I am giving you my word. I mean, and so when you understand that, and when you, when you know that this is his covenant name, that he is our Jehovah Rapha, you know that he is our healer. And, and, and I don't think we need anything more than that. It's just so beautiful, isn't it? Um, right. So, and there's so many scriptures that's mentioned in your notes, which I'd like to go through for us to just, you know, understand the the weight of this whole thing. It's beautiful. Psalm 105, verse 37. Um, it says, "He also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribes." Okay. It would be page seven in your notes. In your textbooks, that is. Psalm 105, verse 37. None was feeble among his tribes. Uh, it says that their sandals didn't wear out after walking for 40 years in the desert. Right? Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 21. 40 years you sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out, and their feet did not swell. One more scripture uh, for us to just look into this is Psalm 103, verse 1 to 5. Psalm 103, verse 1 to 5, you know this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? It's beautiful, right? Time and time again, scripture says that he is a Jehovah Rapha. He heals. He is the Lord, our healer. This is most of the scriptures what we read is from the Old Testament. And Jesus came to display exactly that. He came to reveal the Father to an orphan world. In everything that Jesus did, Jesus came to do a lot of things, right? He came to die for our sins. He came to you know take the power back from the uh, the enemy. But in doing all of that, he uh, there was an unveiling that was happening. Right? There was a, there was an unveiling that was happening. So number one reason, uh, so what mi he, miracles, healing, and deliverance does is it reveals the reality and the nature of God, right? And we see that in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, uh, that it it is hap it happened through the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is perfect theology, okay? Um, and we'll look into that point in more much more deeper sense as we. Uh, you know, go a little bit more deeper into the course. Okay, are you all with me? Uh, for, this is just still the first point. Okay. Okay. The second point, why we, uh, the second biblical reason is miracles reveal God's greatness. Miracles reveal God's greatness. 
This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. So the important uh, three words there is manifested his glory. Okay, manifested his glory. So this so what is happening in John chapter two, by the way? You turn the water into that's you know as uh, we believe that it's supposed to be the first um, recorded um, miracle of what Jesus did, right? Turning the water into wine, right? I mean, guys, just that we can study on it for like I don't know how many hours. <laughs> um, he turned the water into wine, and the waters that was filled, uh, the vessels that was filled, it was called as a stone stone jars. Right? And those waters that was filled in the stone jars was used for the cleansing of the priests for entering the temple. Water used for cleansing, which was turned into wine, which symbolizes the blood. So it just didn't turn any water into blood. <laughs> okay, and so, and he began to manifest his glory by doing that. And it's revealing the God's great God's greatness, isn't it? So let's one more aspect of looking at it is this, and I think I've shared with us in the last semester, but I want to remind us again is um, he's showing that he is outside of time in doing this. Right? We all live in time, you know, uh, within this dimension of time. Uh, it's nine thirty here. It can be. 12.30, somewhere else in the world, etc., etc., right? So he turned the water into wine. Now, just, I am not a farmer, but it take, I know it, you know, for you to grow a wine or make a wine industry, first you have to buy a land, right? You have to till the land, and then, you know, make grape plants grow, <laughs> right? Have a vineyard. And the right season, wait for the grapes to come, grow, and then once it's ripe, take it, and then you know stomp it. That I've seen. Okay, stomp the grapes, extract the juice, and then the fermentation process begins. I don't know how many months, sometimes years, right? They ferment it. So, just making wine takes a long time. Well, it's rhyming, huh? Wine and time. <laughs> it takes a long time, isn't it, in the natural. But you see the miracle, because he's outside of time, it's like everything is done, you know. <laughs> During the vineyard, everything, you know, whatever, what, what, what you need, huh? God's like, what do you need? Uh, I'm outside of time, I don't need to wait. What is that? He's displaying his glory, he's manifesting his glory, he's showing off his greatness. Are you with me? Right? So miracles reveal God's greatness in ways that we can't even imagine. It's just, he's just too good. Uh, all right, uh, let's move on. Point number three. Uh, any questions at this point? Are you guys all okay? How are you guys doing online? All good? Okay. Awesome, awesome. Um, miracles demonstrate God's compassion. Miracles demonstrate God's compassion. Psalm 145, verse 8 to 9, it's written in your notes. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, <clears throat> slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all, on, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Okay, His tender mercies are over all his works. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Full of compassion. Uh, uh, again, uh, you know, any, anytime you see the word, come across words like beautiful, it simply means full of beauty. Wonderful, full of wonder. Right? 
that's what it is and so here it's just not saying compassion full because it's not an english word <laughs> but it, when you say it's full of compassion right uh, <clears throat> Full, uh, we use that word when, like, okay, when you're filling a water bottle, yeah, okay, say I'm filling this water. <clears throat> um, so in this flask, there's right now water up till here, right? And I would say, is that full? So if the water is, was up to this level, is that full? Not really. So a vessel is really not full until it overflows. That's the only way you can measure and say the fullness. Okay, The only way you can confidently say that the vessel is full is if it's overflowing. Right? When God says, uh, be filled with the Spirit, uh, we are not filled un unless we overflow. That is how fullness is measured in the kingdom. Is your life overflowing? That's the question. Right? If your life is overflowing with the, with the things of God, with, the, you know, with everything that's related to the God's kingdom, then that means you're full. If you're not overflowing, that means you're not quiet. But here, God, uh, you know, the scripture says that He is full of compassion. That means, again, Psalm twenty-three. We remember, my cup overflows. He says, right. So He's abundant. This is this endless, endless source and supply of compassion. That's who our God is, right? We, you know, we sing that uh, worship song: "You're the living water, never dying fountain." Yeah. <laughs> so miracles demonstrate God's compassion. When he healed the sick, when Jesus stooped down and healed the blind person, what was he doing? He was moving in compassion. There are scriptures, okay, we're going to read a lot of scriptures that says that Jesus had compassion. Okay, are you ready? Everything is in the notes. Just follow along with me. Matthew 14, 14. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. You see, his ministry of healing preceded with compassion. Okay? So if you don't have compassion for people, I'm not talking about sympathy. Okay? Sympathy is different. Compassion is different. Okay? Uh, we let the dictionary define that. Go back and read it. Okay? <laughs> Uh, okay, one more scriptures. 1532. Now Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me for three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry lest they faint on the way. I have compassion on the multitude. Matthew 20, 34. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes. Mark 1, 41. Let's read some more. It's okay. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. Mark 5, 18, 19. And when he got into the boat, he... He who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. Again, we haven't come to the main point here, but he says, but Tell your friends what great things. In the previous point, we see it displays the greatness of God, isn't it? The Lord has done for you, and, and how he has had compassion on you you okay yeah i think that's uh <laughs> um so do you have compassion is a question you need to answer yourself are you in ministry um for what 
right do you love god and not love people right? we can't say that we love god and not love people it's it's contradictory it doesn't work uh, if you love god you ought to love people and that shows that you are full of compassion and out of that compassion you want to minister to them in healing and deliverance what would jesus do that was a very famous thing in early 2000s wwjd <laughs> you know we used to have the wristbands and t-shirts everything wwjd like what would jesus do you know i would also annoy friends you know <laughs> just irritate them as what would jesus do <laughs> Uh, what would Jesus do if you know? Um, and we put ourselves in His shoes, isn't it? Um, and minister to people uh, with healing and compassion. All good. Okay. All right. Fourth point: Miracles have a powerful effect on people, especially on those who do not believe. Okay, miracles have a powerful effect on people, especially on those who do not believe. Okay, so Luke chapter 5, verse 15. However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came to hear and to be healed, of, uh, healed by him of their infirmities. So the report went around. Miracles get people's attention. Miracles get people's attention. Okay, now some of it is good, most of it can be bad. So, what Jesus was doing, it says the report went around. What he did in this city, people in the other city heard about it. So, and then there were those who were sick people who would come to say, I heard you did this, heal me too. That's a good thing. And then there were those, all the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they're like, I heard what he did. Let's go see this guy. You know, how can he do this? Who is he? What, what, what's happening? Miracles caught the attention. Good, bad. It's like, you know, when an accident happens on the road, <laughs> helping or not, we all want to go see the person who's fallen down. <laughs> it's the sad state of. <laughs> You know, you want to help on her? Like, what, 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 what happened? Fell down. Oh, okay. This is something you're riding the bike, you know. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, let's look, look at one more scriptures. Uh, scripture, eight, Acts chapter 8, verse 6. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. You know, let's just look at in our modern day context as well. I remember in 2005, there was a huge crusade that happened in Bangalore. Huge crusade uh, where it was, it happened in a scale like it, it had never happened before. Uh, a huge ground was taken. This is 2005, guys. Um, a huge crowd. People came from all over, not just India, from all over the world to this crusade. Because they had heard of this person who was coming, yeah, and and about his ministry, and back then we had there was this Christian channel called I think TVN, and God TV was not yet there, uh, and so you know morning eight o'clock, uh, so the word of his ministry went around, and so they came. So that's just one example. And, and there has been so many men of God who've come to our land and who wanted to flock to the Crusades simply because they heard the report. So they wanted to go see. Right? So miracles, signs, and wonders get the attention of people. Right? Good and bad. That, that's fine. That's... <laughs> Okay, the second part of that uh, point is miracles act as signposts to point people to God and cause people to glorify God. Okay, look at the statement very clearly. Miracles act as signposts. Underline that. Miracles act as signposts to point people 
to the pastor or the evangelist. To my ministry, your ministry. Done. To God. Yes, thank you. Right. And cause people to glorify God. Okay, uh, it's very important that we understand that. Um, so, miracle acts as a signpost. What is a signpost? The board is over there. Okay. <laughs> That's a sign. Sorry. It shows you the direction. Okay. Yeah, we've all gone on <clears throat> on some road trip. Yes or no? Like short road trip, long road trip, doesn't matter, right? Um, so you're on the road trip in the highway. There's the board that says Anand Bhavan <laughs> or uh, McDonald's for all you guys who don't know what Anand Bhavan is. <laughs> is 20 kilometers away. That's a what? It's a signpost that says, oh, I'm hungry. Where, where do we stop? Oh, it says, you know, McDonald's is just 20 kilometers away. Nobody will stop at the signpost and be satisfied. Yes, that doesn't happen, isn't it? If you've done that, uh, we need to go to the doctor. <laughs> Nobody will stop at a signpost. Right? The signpost will say, OK, a thousand kilometers to your destination. You, again, you don't just stand at the signpost and say, I have arrived. A signpost leads you to the destination, isn't it? Same thing with miracles, signs, and wonders. It is a signpost just to point it back to God. Really, you are healed. Amen. He is your healer. Jesus, He is the Jehovah Rapha. By His stripes, we are healed. You, we sh it shouldn't take long for us to give glory to God. If, even if in a split second you think this is happening because of you, oh boy, danger, danger, danger. Even if it's a split second you think this is happening because I'm anointed and all of that. Uh, what is happening is from what God did, you're trying to take the credit, right? When all glory belongs to God. Are you with me? Okay, all good so far? Okay, thanks, guys. You guys are amazing listeners. <laughs> okay. Uh, one more thing. Um, so, what miracles does uh, in page twelve? Um, it brings conviction of sin. I'm just going to go a little faster, and because uh, we'll cover all of this at a little later point. Uh, miracles, healing, and wonders brings conviction of sin. Brings people to a decision point. Brings people to a decision point. Miracles are essential to see transformation of sin of the sin cities of the world. Miracles are essential to see the transformation of the sin cities of the world. And uh, this is the point I want to give a little bit more emphasis on in your textbook, I'm on page 15, is the importance Jesus gave to miracles. <clears throat> this is the number fifth point, fifth biblical reason. Importance Jesus gave to miracles. Uh, for me, again, of all the eight eight biblical reasons that we are looking at. Uh, this is my favorite one. I think this is the most important one, in my opinion. Um, so as mentioned, in Jesus' earthly ministry, he gave a lot of importance to uh, healing ministry. So let's look at it. John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Okay, let's turn the page. Let's go to... Let's look at John chapter 5, verse 31 to 36. Let's go to the scriptures now. John chapter 5. Uh, 
was th verse 31 to 36. So uh, let me read it for us. If I alone bear witness about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who bears witness about me, and I know that the testimony that he bears about me is true. Verse 33. You sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Not that the testimony that I receive is from man, but I say these things so that you may be saved. But as a burning and shining lamp, and you, you are willing to rejoice for, while, for a while in his light. Verse 36. But the testimony I have is greater than that of John. Okay, The testimony that I have is greater than that of John. For the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I am doing, bear witness about me, the Father has sent me. Okay. Um, I heard the bell go. Um, this is a very important point that I'd like to dwell on, but uh, we'll just stop here for this session. We'll take a break and we'll continue from where we left. Okay. Thanks, guys. I'll see you all in 10 minutes. <laughs>